Hello multi marzipaneers of malt fiction and thank you to CG Brain for that malt mention. Malt mates, welcome to the Bothy. I'm Ralphie and this is uh, the home. <laughs> I know it looks a little bit rustic and in need of some basic maintenance but it's still the home of <clears throat> in-depth um, whiskey reviews and reviews of other quality spirits and this is Ralphie Review 946 and I'm reviewing an independent bottling because I'm having a wee season of independent bottlings and I'm doing a review at the moment in September 2022 of independent bottlings followed by official bottlings which may be independently bottled because with Scotch whisky Nothing is simple and straightforward. It's just part of the territory. But fortunately, there's nothing simple and straightforward about the wonderful complex array of flavours that Scotch single malt whisky can deliver. And this is a good example of that. And you will find with Scotch whisky, whiskies that there's these little single malt distilleries that you've possibly never heard of, you didn't even know they existed until you were looking at an independent bottling up in the shelf, in shops, probably speciality liquor stores all around the world and you're wondering what on earth are they? What are they like? Are they peated? Are they unpeated? Are they fruity? Are they spicy? There's only one way to find out and that is to buy a bottle, smell it and to taste it, which is what I'm doing for you with this independent bottling of Breval. Breval Distillery is known more often as Braes of Glenlivet. It's a fairly young distillery. It was uh, opened back in the 1970s, uh, which is relatively young in the scheme of things. And um, shortly there. Shortly thereafter, it was producing single malts as blend filler. So very much an industrial jobbing working distillery situated in Speyside. So you get that kind of rounded Speyside characteristic. This isn't peaty. This is typical of Speyside actually, but it's not overly engineered because it's not really designed as a single malt. It's designed as blend filler to add a little bit of complexity uh, to blends and to add a few little savoury notes. So what you have here is a slightly sweet, savoury, dryish, complex single malt, which doesn't actually appear very often. In fact, it's so unusual that this is the first time in all these reviews over all these years that I've actually ever reviewed it. And that's all thanks to an independent bottler called North Star Spirits, who are amongst a growing group of whiskey presenting companies that are not officially distilleries although increasingly you will see independent bottlers owning distilleries where they can afford to do it and where they're prepared to take the risk. But North Star came out good prices, good quality, and I like, like any independent bottler, they can have some absolutely stunning bottlings of whiskey and some that are maybe not so much but they're still competent enough. They're interesting in their own right. Uh, and this is one of these whiskies that's somewhere in the middle. I mean, I've been tasting this now on and off for three weeks and I'm actually enjoying it. But if you were starting out in whiskey, you wouldn't particularly enjoy it. So leave this bottling to the experienced maltsters who don't mind the savoury notes, the slight fusile notes in a single malt, which to be honest, I actually do. So I've poured a wee glass here, not too much, don't be greedy, want to make this last. So I'm going to give you some information off the label because the information on the label is, is, is what really matters. 
And um, as I mentioned, bottled by North Star, it's Cask Series number 18. Um, distilled in February 2009 and bottled in 2022. There we go, March 22. It says on the label, non-chill filtered, natural colour. I want to say that again, because this is so important as you make your journey. It doesn't matter at the beginning, but it does matter later on. Now, where's that steampunker of mine? Priceless, invaluable. Unchill filtered, natural colour. Bottled from an Oloroso sherry butt. Distilled, matured and bottled in Scotland by North Star Spirits Limited. Classy label, by the way. I'll hold it forward so you can see it. Stylish, well designed, and importantly, it carries the necessary information on it. I shall continue. This is from a single cask, and um, it bottled at 55% volume. There we go. Right, Tio. Any other information? Well, they've got some tasting notes here, but I'm not really going to bother because with them. In fact, I'll tell you what the tasting notes are so you can compare their tasting notes with mine. Okay? Because you will find on some bottlings of whiskey, you can get some weird and wonderful tasting notes that you can't really relate to. Don't worry about it, mom, mates. The nose is uh, Airfix glue. Mmm, yummy. Airfix glue. Plastic model aeroplanes and tanks, you know, speak to the kids. I don't know if they still do it these days for, for making up the toys. Airfix glue, peach stones and sweet almonds. Okay, it's getting better. Palette, macaroon and candied lemon rind. Ooh, exotic. With a finish of milk chocolate covered honeycomb. Right. <laughs> honeycomb, by the way, is predominantly wax. I know, I keep bees. And this is one of 341 bottles from the butt. It's also 13 years old. There you go. So, big cask, 13 years old. So that already tells us that we're getting a, a, a youngish whiskey from the year because it's matured in a bigger volume cask. And we should be expecting some dry fruit notes and raisininess from the Oloroso Sherry influence. So let's go for it. Nose. Quite restrained for 55% alcohol. Quite commendable actually. It isn't particularly complex. It's really quite simple. But it's a clean, fresh, decent sherry cask. And it's going in the right direction. First taste. Nippy, spicy, raisin, rum and raisin ice cream. Yeah, there's a little bit of marzipan in there. And yes, I'm noticing already on the palate a little bit of waxiness. Now, see that? Not a lot of whiskey, but two teaspoonfuls of water. So I'm adding relatively quite a lot of water to this whiskey. Why is that? Simple. It's relatively young. It's only 13 years old, so it can take the water. Secondly, at 55%, the first taste, tasting it neat, it's really quite astringent, quite biting. It's quite almost hostile. So it's really asking for water because if you don't add water, it's just going to nip your tongue and an anaesthetize your palate and you won't actually taste it properly. Don't don't listen to anybody else who tells that you tells you that you never add whisk, water to whiskey. Another piece of advice I would give you, malt mates, is make sure it is clean, fresh water, preferably soft and not highly minerated. Right, so not hard water with lots of lime stone dissolved in it. You don't want that. It just doesn't work as well. Much kinder in the nose, more complex. 
we're getting, yeah, a wee touch of peach. Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, I'm not noticing <laughs> any Airfix glue. I'm not getting that at all. Raisin, Sultana, slight apricot notes. The peach is slightly overripe. It's almost mango-like in its kind of intensity. Tends slightly sour, sweet and sour, veering towards the sour rather than the sweet. Uh, not a lot else going on because, of course, I've just added the water. It's only just beginning to open up. Let's go back to it. Ah, some lovely cask wood coming across here. Really nice. Um, not just American oak, by the way. I get the impression that this is a this is an older wet cask, which has still retained its its presence. It's not soured out. It's not gone too acidic. It is slightly citrus. Well, it is slightly acidic. I'm being too kind with citrus. It's, it is slightly acidic, but not unpleasantly so. It's actually working it kind of with the whiskey. You can see that there's a little bit of a jousting match going on between the cask and the malt, but they're going to settle themselves down together and get on far, far better after about 10 to 15 minutes in the glass. This is so important. If you rush this whiskey, you're really, I, I guarantee you, you're not really going to enjoy it that much. Uh, these whiskies, you slow them down. It's a fascinating experience actually because you're tasting a, a, a signature, a single malt signature, which is relatively invisible to most whiskey drinkers. So the uniqueness of that is, is an event in itself. Of course you'll say, well, this Brave Isle or Braze of Glenlivet, it reminds me of some other whiskies. Of course it will, it's from Speyside. Many Speyside whiskies and most most Scotch single malt whiskies are in Speyside still, and new ones are opening up in Speyside. But the, you find that they have a kind of common theme generally. I would say about this is it's kind of slightly Highland, by the way. It's not typically Speyside. It's got that kind of dryness in the finish. It's got a certain complexity in the development which isn't safe, it isn't just nice, it's relatively complex and a little bit demanding. Um, in fact, I would describe it as slightly fusile. And I don't mean that as an insult, I actually mean that, mean, that, mean that as a compliment because it's adding interest and authenticity to the signature that's coming off the stills here. A oh, much more mellow, Opening up honeysuckle, um, barley sugar, more refined, more delicate, a little bit of floral and soft spice is coming through. The lemon rind, yeah, I'm getting more grapefruit rind actually. Touch of banana, subtle banana, soft banana. The peach is still prominent. Taste. So much bigger in the palate. Wonderfully oily, even slightly waxy. Reminds me of Kleinlish. It's got a slight waxy, dry, astringent note, particularly growing and getting stronger in the development and then holding right into the finish, which is tart. Uh, it's crispy, it's tannic, it's gingery. Um, and it kind of sustains, it kind of switches off at the, the finish in terms of complexity, but the actual aftertaste holds on quite strongly for the age. What an interesting, authentic and original single malt whiskey. I'm enjoying it, but I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be to everybody's taste. This is a sort of single malt whiskey. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And one reason is because you've never quite tasted anything like it before. It reminds me in terms of identity a bit of dull, like Dalmunnock, uh, which is going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment, if I say so myself. But a fascinating whiskey, a little bit of scotch mist 
starting to appear in the glass. One more taste and then I'm going to dish out a malt mark. Wonderfully rich sour note developing. A naturally understated complex whiskey without being overtly complex. It's subliminally complex. The cask is really helping this single malt tremendously because by the size of the cask being a butt, it's not overwhelmed the still signature of the flavour of the single malt with loads of sherry. It's not a sherry bomb. The balance between the sherry cask influence and the still signature from Breval or Brazer Glenlivet. You see it called both. I call it Breval most of the time. Um, is, is endearing, engaging, it isn't a five-star whiskey. It's it's a very good lowly four four star. Let's give it a mark now. Um, I'm going to give this. Eighty-three out of a hundred. That me monsters is a malt mark. It's the malt card you see. It's got to be a malt mark. I know you know. But this is my way of just <laughs> reminding you. And uh, there you have it. A whiskey review has been completed once again in the Bothy. Oh, I'm telling you what, mate. Sometimes I struggle. I have to go into the stash. I have to pick out another bottle, open it, and engage and connect it with it for about three weeks to a month before I can sit down here at the barrel and review it for you. But I tell you what. It's better than my day job. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Hey, click subscribe if you haven't. Go on. I dare you subscribe and your feed, your YouTube feed, will be filled with some better quality content, right? Because you'll get notified when I bring out another whiskey review. Um, and if you want to join me again for Ralphie Review 945, is it 945 or 946? 946. Right. Did I say 45? Right. It's 946. Don't ask. It's been like this for quite a while and I doubt anything will ever change. Um, for my extras, uh, I'll be bringing up uh, another video shortly called The Extras, in which I'll be giving information about complex whiskies, hard to find whiskies, and why I review them. Um, there you go. Now you know. Bye.